Hey guys, Maritza here. I'm going to be doing, is it number eight? Maritza's Detransitioning Journey, episode eight, if I'm not mistaken. It's been, gosh, I detransitioned in February 19th, so it's going on five weeks now, and it feels a lot longer than that, but it's only been five weeks. I am, I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful for where I'm at, considering the small amount of time that's taking place. I'm, I'm really grateful for the time that I get to spend here in this temporary home that I, that I have right now until I get back home to Florida once I deal with all the legalities and paperwork and things that I need to take care of while I'm here in New Mexico. I'm also grateful for the great connections that I've made recently and in the support group that I have um, in the chat room during my two podcasts daily group of women and some men that are wonderful. They're, we've become a family. Um, it's, it's the most amazing thing, the amount of love and support that I get from these people. And um, it's, it's just wonderful. You know, it's wonderful. And, and I'm very grateful, extremely grateful. I know a lot of people don't understand the whole spiritual God loving thing. You know, they only understand what they could feel, touch, the drugs they could take, the behavior they could do to grant them some sort of stimulation or some sort of dopamine high. I guess we all have a different way of, you know, trying to gather that feeling. And I, I find that feeling through my belief. And I don't want to push my belief on anyone because that's very personal. That's something, that's a relationship. I'm not a religious person. I have a relationship with Christ and God, and that's between God and Christ and me. Um, but I do want to say that it has been comforting, extremely comforting, and it's allowed me to find peace, and it's allowed me to stay away from depression. Most um, people that are detransitioned, they become very depressed, and they start getting a bit dysphoric, going the other way around. I thankfully have not experienced the dysphoria going the other way around. And, and that's a good thing. And that's a good thing. And I, and I also think that that also speaks volume about what I'm trying to say regarding gender identity and dysphoria. Because if it was the case and people claim that I'm not dysphoric, and that I was never trans when I was heading that way, wouldn't you think that I would be experiencing all sorts of stuff coming back? Because I'd be like, oh my God, all this hair on my face and oh my God, my deep voice and oh my God, I don't have any breasts. Wouldn't you think I'd be all perturbed and worried and, and, and frantic? And I'm not. Because it's about finding peace within you. That's the name of the game. It's about healing. There's nothing that we could do to rush to get anywhere, to be anything, because it's all within. There's nothing external that brings happiness. Happiness is only internal. Happiness is just being and accepting where you're at. That's true happiness. That's contentment. That's peace. The other is people are constantly searching for something, constantly wanting to achieve something, go from point A to point B. They're constantly running, constantly creating drama. And that's what I see the trans community is all about. And all I'm trying to do is educate because we are all entitled to have a voice. We're all entitled to express our views and opinion. And I've spent a lot of years studying this, lots of years speaking to different trans people, speaking to different health professionals who are too afraid to speak out because they don't want to be eight balled because this is what this community does. It wants to destroy and kill whoever doesn't sing their same party line. So it's important to educate and I've taken it upon myself to do so. This is not done out of hate. This is not done out of anger. This is not done out of anything but pure love and education for education's sake, because there needs to be opposing opinions. Like there's a Republican and a Democrat party. There's night and day. There needs to be two views to this and people need to be allowed to express themselves and speak their mind. And there needs to be other theories and just that small minded theory based on junk science. So I want to share a little bit of, I wrote a, a blog today and I'm going to go ahead and read that being erased due to healing. You know, people are saying to detransitioners that no, 
you're, you were never trans and no, you never had dysphoria. So this is what I have to say about that. It's really pathetic when people tell detransitioners that they were never trans in the first place. So therefore it doesn't count. That's like telling an ex drug addict, an ex alcoholic or an ex porn addict. You could fill in the blank, all the different X's of whatever condition that they never had an addiction because they were able to recover. Hate to break the news. There's a lot of recovering addicts in the world. It's called healing, growing up and taking responsibility and living life to the fullest, living the best life you know how to prevent hurting self and hurting others. Because when you go into that transition coping mechanism that people think they're going to do something great, you're pulling other people with you. You're hurting foundations that have been built for years in a family dynamic. You're trying to erase history by changing your birth certificate, by changing your documents, all based on nada, because there's no objective anything to prove at any point in time that anybody's born wrong. It takes a lot of guts and a lot of work to work through trauma. The transitioners, we are the brave ones, not the transitioners. It takes a lot to work through all the hangups, all the childhood trauma, all the sexual abuse, in my opinion, trance is just a cop out. You're escaping, you're running away from a situation. This whole gender dysphoria craze, which is more in alignment with the old diagnosis of gender identity disorder, has no markers, no testing, nothing to quantify it. But they still try to use the line on me, you were never dysphoric. Is there a measurement tool that we use to find out where in that spectrum a person fits in the dysphoric category? There isn't. To disqualify my detransitioning. But of course, I use the same gender specialist many use. And actually, the one that I went to is a very well-known therapist back in South Florida. They have multiple offices. And I went to them for six months. And they were like, oh, you're the classic case, classic case. And this was back in 2003, you know? So, but not according to this community. Oh no, I had no dysphoria and I was never trans, whatever that means. So I have my theories from the years of research because I've spent a lot of hours and years researching this because I wanted to know what was wrong with me. And of course, being involved with many relationships to include friendships from individuals of this community. I lived in Fort Lauderdale, Wilton Manor. Lots and lots of trans people had lots and lots of trans friends. For starters, many in this community have issues with their looks. That's the main focus, the looks, and are hung up on it. Men who did not like what they looked like got a grand idea that if they became a female, they would be beautiful. I don't think it was such a bright idea after all. You know, that's not a great idea. Just because you want to be beautiful doesn't mean you're a woman. But it's everything is faced or based on looks and validation. They're all into wanting to prostitute themselves. I actually met one of my girlfriends at a trans bar where they would bartend and they would do things in that bar. So... You know, the <laughs> working shady trans nightclubs love to use dating sites and are very promiscuous, wanting to be the next actress or model on the runway. They think they can do women better than women can, better than, than us, you know. They experiment with trying to lactate. They take their body like it's some sort of project, the creation of a creation. These are very nerdy, geeky men into video games, into fantasy. And then all of a sudden that fantasy becomes reality in their mind and then they have to create what's in their mind because they're very mind-based, they're very cerebral. They all go through this victim mentality. If I had a dime for every trans woman account that I've read that everybody else is doing something to them, everyone does things to them, it's scripted, it's scripted performance. It's like so scripted. 
The FDM, FTMs all love to build their body to see themselves as a strong man. I got into bodybuilding because of that. Because I feel if I get big and bulky, no one will be able to hurt me. No one will be able to hurt me like my dad hurt my mom. Nobody will be able to hurt me like my uncle did to, and so forth and so forth and so on. Everybody's got their story. They all want flat chest and bulk. You look at your body and you don't really like, there's so many women that don't like their breasts. They have, they're dysphoric to their breasts because they're too big or they're in the way, they've been objectified. Many go to become strippers. I watched a story in Showtime and I was actually, I met him in person when I was on the Maury Povich show, the Ray Nay something story. He wanted to be a stripper. You get many that just wanna be porn stars, you know, and love to be in the limelight. They love attention, lack of attention of growing up. They want validation. They wanna feel like they belong because they've never felt like they did. It's all about the looks and nothing true about their being. It's all, I mean, you see every trans guy and every trans woman, everything's about the look. I mean, they've got this, it's like an ego. It's like a little robot that develops and it takes over and it's all about looks. It's a creation, an avatar, it's escapism. Again, nothing about it holds any water. This is the only diagnosis that a patient goes into a doctor's office and says, I have this and I want hormones and I want surgery. There's no testing, there's no other alternative. It's the same route. Many women who have been sexually abused or felt invisible want power and strength. So then when someone gets away, like myself and many of the other detransitioners and, and a lot of detransitioners just hide somewhere and try to heal because they know the ramification, they're too weak to handle it. They wanna erase you. You never existed, you're a non-person. They will try to destroy you because you hold the secret that they don't want anyone to know. Dare any detransitioner try to speak up without being shamed, lied about, and harassed. And never mind about discredited, ridiculed, the list goes on and on because the agenda wants to shut us up. Well, I'm kind of a special snowflake. When somebody tells me not to speak or to shut up, I speak louder. Compliments of my Asperger's. The truth is that there are many factors why people want to alter their body. No different than anyone who undergoes any type of cosmetic surgery or procedure. No different. They don't like their nose or chin, their big breasts or lack thereof. They fantasize with having different genitalia, penis or vagina envy will lead to such an act. All based on various mental insecurities and disorders. What's with the need of genital alteration anyway? Besides envy, Biology creates genitals for reproduction purposes, not as a self-identifying marker. We are animals, reflective in nature. The mind gets us in trouble and requires constant stimulation. Gender dysphoria is a new way of self-defining, a method our species uses for creating identity and recognizing and recognition from the tribe. A new way of creating a dopamine rise and escapism. It's another improper and outrageous coping mechanism created by the broken mind. A mind that is part of the body, not disconnected, as many would like to think. A mind that is not gendered, but creates itself according to its environment and human experience. Contrary to people's belief, the mind is not gender and the mind is not different. It's all one unit. You don't have just a mind and your body. They don't work against each other, or away from each other. We are being duped and forced to accept this non-reality and it has become an epidemic of grand proportion. You cannot identify as the opposite sex you were born as. You have no grounds to stand on. Your concept of pain or discomfort, which many of you named dysphoria, is no different than when a child throws a tantrum because he can't have a toy. He is in pain or I think he thinks he is, you know. He will drop himself on the floor, kicking and screaming, making all sorts of noise embarrassing their parent, and it will appear as if someone is killing them, as if he's, he's in so much pain, but we know it, that he's just having a tantrum, and we know it'll eventually pass. If you give in, you have a problem. The first time you give in to your son's or daughter's tantrum, you have a problem. This is what we're seeing, folks. This is no different. Stop falling for this. I know too well what it is and how it works. Let it at least create some dialogue. 
for crying out loud, this is madness. Let people's voices be heard. Let them state their opinion. What are you so afraid of? The truth coming out? Just let people be, let people express, let people educate, let people say what they need to say. Enough of this dominating, enough of trying to, you know, ridicule and, and eight ball people from speaking. It's not right. And you're not going to continue to get away with it. It's time for people to rise up against this, or at least to have an alternative, to have other solution, not just a one size fits all. Because one size fits all does not solve a single thing. Not at all. It doesn't help anyone. So we need to have an open dialogue. We need people to be able to speak out and educate as they see fit. And we need to stop promoting this disorder that's being used to push pills and surgeries. No one's healing anyone. Gender identity is a fallacy. We are biological in nature and our genitalia was there for reproductive purposes, not as a marker, not as an identity. Anyway, you know, it's like I said, it's been going on five weeks. I'm continuing to, <clears throat> my voice is doing something. I don't know what it's doing, but it's doing something. <clears throat> it's almost like going through puberty again. And I have a feeling it's, it's going to, the voice is going to drop, not drop, go up drop us the other way. It's, it's going to change. It's going to like become more of its natural way. I've always had a, a deeper voice in the average female because I'm a progestin induced sterilization. Mother took DES to prevent miscarriage. But <clears throat> I have a feeling things are going to change a lot. Things are, I already see it in my face, you know, for somebody who's been on testosterone for as long as I am, you know, the changes are coming pretty quickly. I'm healing. I'm healing. And once I leave Silver City and I return home to Florida and um, I'm around my family and friends and, you know, just heal some more, heal some more. And, and I want to create places for detransitioners to feel safe, to be able to share their story, to be able to, to heal, not to feel like they're doing something bad because they've, they're the ones that have woken up. They're the ones that are using coping skills to heal versus a Band-Aid. They're the true heroes, not transitioners. Transitioners bailed out, escape artists, the easy way out. I don't want to deal with this, so I'm going to create another character. And this is my opinion, and I'm entitled to have it. You may not like it. You may not believe it. You may not want to understand it. But there's certain laws in life that we follow, and there's a law of biology and nature. There's men, there's women, and there's intersex. Transgender is not intersex, not even close. Two different things. Stop duping people and making people believe that that's the case. I just saw a while ago on Facebook, some 60 odd year old man with three kids decides he wants to be a woman. All of a sudden now, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it's really, it's like people want to reinvent themselves because they get bored with the life. So they, they look at it and they go, wow, this should be really fun. We need to fix this people. And I know many of you will not agree and that's fine. You're entitled. See, that's the beauty of, of living in a free country. You're entitled to disagree with me and I'm entitled to disagree with you. The key is learning how to coexist and learning that we both have a place on this beautiful planet, to be able to have a platform, to be able to speak our mind, to be able to educate. And that's what makes living in this blue planet beautiful, and especially in this country, while we still have freedom of speech. But you know what? Transgender rights are gonna end up taking everybody else's rights. They're gonna take away the freedom of speech that people have. So people, we really need to be mindful of what's going on here. And I just give away your approval not tell the emperor that he has beautiful clothes when he's actually naked. All right, guys, till next time. I love you all very much. Please remember to love yourselves too. Love yourself as you are. Don't make yourself a project. Don't hurt your body and your health. All 
for nothing because that's what's going to happen. You're not going anywhere. You're just running around, running around to come back to the same place you started. Cosmetics does not change your sex. Take care and have a good one.